All right, let's talk about quads, triangles, poles, all of this kind of confusion out there. Are triangles okay? Are they not okay? Uh, let's kind of take a look at that. I'm going to kind of start with a very generic example, kind of talk us about the ter terminology, and then I'm going to show practical examples with a character and why some things are bad and why some things are good. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, so right here I have this cube, and I can see that it's divided equally and I can see that each one of these is a perfect what I call quad meaning it's exactly four edges okay where this one I can see has a couple triangles okay now I should also point out that each one of these have something slightly different but if I turn off the wireframe okay and if we deselect all this whoop, there we go these are exactly the same visually okay so that's why when we talk about the wireframe, it's so important for an employer to see the wireframe because I feel like that's going to determine if it's going to work or not. And you will see what you mean by that when I get to the character portion. But let's take a look at this. So why is it so important? Well, what I say is if we can keep it all quads while modeling, that's going to be ideal. That's going to be the perfect model. Um, now, if it has some triangles, it's not the end of the world, but I want to show you some things here. Okay, so if I put in an insert edge loop, I can see that if I go here and put an insert edge loop, I can see how it goes all the way around the model. Okay, it's going to be nice and clean. Everything's still going to be a quad. Now here, I can see when I put an insert edge loop, when it gets to a triangle, now it kind of doesn't know what to do, so it stops. Okay, so I feel like the modeling tools work better when it's all quads. Okay, now if it goes this way, now we can see that it even gets weirder. Okay, it's getting really bizarre. Maybe that's not what we intended. Um, and even if I would have, you know, if I would have done this in a different order, sometimes they can go through triangles if it's going through this way, but let's see if I go this way now. And now if I put an edge loop this way, and if I put an edge loop this way, oh my gosh, what a mess. You can see what a mess that's becoming. Where this one's not going to be a mess because the, the tools were designed to, be, to go through quads. Okay, so I'm going to say when you're modeling, if you can keep it all quads, it's going to be a more organized, efficient model. And I can see that triangles have a potential to kind of screw things up. And they're going to be problematic later on. We'll, we'll talk more about that as well. Um, but there are some circumstances where we can use them. We'll talk about that as well. Moving on here, okay, you can see that I have kind of, um, this is a quad considering it's got four sides. This is a triangle, this is a quad, triangle, quad, triangle, quad. Um, but what I want to point out on this one is this has a pole, okay? So a pole would be any vertex that has more than four faces attached to it. So I can see that this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And poles, we have to be very careful on where we place poles, okay? And once again, that'll be a lot more obvious when I get to the character example. Uh, but I just kind of wanted to point that out. And on this one, this is what's considered an n-gon, okay? What an n-gon is, it's basically a, any face that has more than four sides. And that's where n comes in. The n is just a number, so it's any amount. So it could be 10 sides, or it could be five sides all the way up to 100 sides, right? Um, that's an n-gon. Now, once again, visually, if we turn off the wireframe, everything is identical. But one problem that we're going to have on this is if I start smoothing this out, let's say in ZBrush, if I go like this, mesh, smooth, okay, I can see how that bizarre ch shape is only getting more and more bizarre, okay? Now let's take a look at this one. So if I do this one, I can see that that's kind of bizarre there as well. And when I say bizarre, that's going to affect our um, sculpting later. I'll demonstrate that as well. I can see here that's kind of getting, that's kind of bizarre as well. And then if I take this one and if I smooth this out, I can see that this one's still super clean where these other ones, I feel like the problems that they had are almost like 
emphasized and magnified once we start smoothing out the mesh. Okay, now some geometry like a sphere, I can see that all of these are quads, but these are triangles at the top and this would be considered a pole here as well. But in that case it may be okay. Okay, because we're not necessarily going to divide, you know, through here. And even if I smooth this out, yeah, maybe it does get a little weird at the top, but still not too bad. I can see that on a cylinder, by default, once again, this is a pole. These are all um, triangles. So you can see that if I wanted to, like, use my um, insert edge loop, I couldn't put an insert edge loop around here because it can't go through triangles. Okay, kind of a cool trick for that is if I select all of this and extrude, I'd have to kind of scale in like this. Okay, now once I have something like that, now I can see that my tools like insert edge loop are going to work clean again, at least there, if not here. So once again, not through triangles, but you can see that some primitives start like that. And the soccer ball primitive actually starts all end guns. Okay, so you can see that each one's an end gun. Um, once again, not ideal. If I would smooth this out, um, I can see that it. it whoop, I can see that it's kind of weird, um, and it's not once again ideal when it smooths. Okay, the other thing is this is that you may say, well, Dave, I've, I've looked at video game models and they're all triangles. Okay, now that's kind of weird because I thought you said everything should be quads. Well, let's, let's talk about why models do like to be triangles. Okay, if we look at this face right here, this is considered a quad. But if I do something like this, if I pull this vertex up and pull it, like really stress this thing, okay? We could say technically this is still a quad, but look at how stressed it is. I can see that it, it feels like it's a piece of cardboard and it's bent very awkwardly right here. This would be considered a non-planar face where it, it's saying that this front face is not flat. So it's causing a lot of tension on this quad, okay? Where if I took this one, and if I triangulated it, so if I go like this um, to triangulate, now it doesn't matter which one I pull up. It doesn't matter how much tension I put on it at all. You will never have a non-planar face. So in other words, it's impossible for this one to get stressed to the point like this. And it's impossible no matter what point I pull, it's impossible for it to get it stressed really bizarre. So what you could say is, well, you might be saying, well, Dave, then I want to model just in triangles. Here's the thing. Normally what people do is they model in all quads. Once again, for the tools to work perfectly, for the subdivisions to work perfectly, um, to get nice edge flow and things like that. But then to avoid the problem of this is at the end of the day, they're going to, and when it's imported, let's say into a game engine, then you can triangulate it. So if I triangulate this, it will now be all triangles, but it won't have any non-planar faces. Okay, so that made sound kind of weird, but let me take a look at a practical example. So here we can, we can say that we have two identical meshes. And if you're looking at this, you'll be like, hey, this is perfect. And which modeler would you hire? Okay, let's say if you were a company, and you might say, well, they look identical, but one has a significant problem and the other one doesn't. So if I look at the wireframe, I can see that the wireframe on this guy, the wireframe is really bizarre right here. And if I turn on the wireframe on this guy, I can see that the wireframe is correct. Okay. And once again, visually, they look identical. But when I turn this on, let's see why this is considered a problem. So if I go here, um, even if I turn off the wireframe, I'm going to start kind of moving this guy around and I can start to see, whoop, hold on here one second.
I think he's doubled up. Yeah, let me delete this guy. There we go. Okay, so now when I move this around, I can see that I get kind of this weird dimpling that I don't want. Okay, I can see that it's affecting, it's affecting how his mouth deforms. Okay, see that? Where I feel like on this side, look at how clean it is, how clean his like cheek deforms. It's really nice. But on this side, uh, his cheek can't deform properly. You can see that it looks like he's got like weird dimpling happening there. So that's why, and the reason that it's dimpling is because all of this is trying to move into place, but it just can't. It's really bizarre. The other thing too is that, let's say if I was... Um, you know, modeling this guy, and I wanted to put an edge loop through him. Okay, if I click here, remember, okay, you can see our, our tool stop right there. If I go here, it's going to be just really bizarre. I can't really get any kind of good thing happening. And you can see that because my edge loop stopped here, I'm going to have another problem when he moves. There's going to be kind of another dimple there, another dimple there. It's just going to be kind of mess upon mess upon mess. Where on this guy, let's say if I need to put another edge loop in, I can see that because his edge, um, let me see, insert edge loop. Because his topology is set up nice from the beginning, that when I put this in, it's strategic that this flows nicely and it flows nicely around the eyes, okay, and everything, that it's not going to disrupt the what's called the deformation. In other words, when he moves, when he talks, when he's making a facial expression, it's not going to disrupt anything. Let's take a look at what happens if we bring this type of geometry into a program like ZBrush. Okay, let's say if we're sculpting a character. So you can see that I have this character. Whoop, hold on one second. I have this character right here. And I have, if we look at the wireframe, here's the one with a clean wireframe. And then I have the other one here that has a bunch of weird triangles and poles and end guns. Um, once again, if I turn this off, if we're just looking at it kind of side by side without looking at the wireframe, we might say that these are identical. But once I look a little bit closer, I can see that one has a problem. And if I go here, if I go to geometry, and if I divide this up, we can say that those problems kind of build bigger problems. And you can see that, let's say if I wanted to draw something through here, I can see that right when I get to this point here, there's a problem. It's kind of magnifying that problem. And if I look, oh, that's where that pole was that was really awkward on my geometry. So it doesn't matter how good you are at sculpting. Um, you're going to run into problems later on when you subdivide. Okay, so like on this guy here, if I bring this up, because he's got clean topology, you can see how much cleaner it is to work on that, right? I can, I can just go all day through all day long and not have to worry about my model screwing up. We're here, we're getting kind of that weird dimpling. So that dimpling is going to be a problem when we're modeling. It's also going to be a problem when we're animating and rigging and moving the facial expressions. So that's why we want that to be nice and clean. Okay, so is it okay to have poles and triangles and that kind of thing? And yeah, we can. And, and in fact, I can see here on the good topology, there are places where there's a pole. So for example, right here, this point, there's one, two, three, four, five quads that intersect at that point because it has to change the edge flow from going this way to the edge flow going this way to the edge flow going that way. So it's naturally going to happen in certain areas. But this is far enough away from any major expression that it's not going to disrupt. It's not going to have that dimpling problem. Okay, we're going to see here's another one. And that's kind of a transition point, kind of we'll say from his eye muscles to his mouth muscles. So I feel like these poles and these edge loops are strategically placed to make sense when the model deforms. You can also see that on here, 
on his eye, so maybe I go like this, I can see that on his eye, there are triangles at the point here. Now, that's the eye, yes, it will move, but it's not going to deform. So I feel like that would be more of a forgivable place to have a triangle. Also, you're not really going to be subdividing the eye, like putting edge loops through the eye, you know, asymmetrically or anything that's going to disrupt your point of, of making it. So it's not going to disrupt the modeling tools. So I would say that that would be okay. And I think a good rule to live by is to say, if your model has 10% triangles or less, that's fine um, if they're strategically placed. So in other words, yes, there's triangles here. There may be triangles if I was going to hide some triangles. Maybe I hide it on the bottom of the feet or maybe I hide it someplace where it's not going to be shown. Um, that's not going to deform a lot. Okay. And let me, let me kind of show you what I mean by that. So if I took this, um, I can see that this hand, okay, this hand is from Turbo Squid by Virgo 3D. And I think this is a great looking hand. But if I go here, I can see that instead of having this edge loop go up and this edge loop go up and this edge loop go up throughout the entire model, they stop right here. Now you can see that this guy strategically made it stop where this is still a quad, okay, but this is a pull. And it's a purposeful pull, meaning that it's there to end these edge loops going through the model. And you can see here's another purposeful pull. So this is how you kind of terminate an edge loop. So I feel like, once again, these are still quads at this point, or you could, you could kill it with a triangle in the same kind of logic, the same idea. But if you're gonna do that, make sure you're doing it at a strategic point. I feel like if this was up here, more where the wrist would deform, there may be kind of a potential dimpling problem effect. So you wanna be, once again, very careful where you place your triangles or where you place your poles and that type of thing. Notice that I'm talking mostly or exclusively basically on organic models. If you have a hard surface model, like something that's very boxy and angular, it becomes less important because most likely it's not going to deform and move in an intricate way. However, let's go back to that idea of the modeling tools. Your modeling tools will be happier with you if you keep it in quads. If you start putting triangles in, your modeling tools could get kind of confused and um, cause problems later on, even though it's not as important with the hard surface. But I think if you have a model that is 100% quads, that's kind of bragging rights, that's saying, hey, this is the perfect model. I think if you have a model with 10% triangles or less, I say that is professionally acceptable. I think if you have a model with n-gons, even one n-gon, I would say that it's not production ready that is not forgivable there's no excuse you should never have an end gone in anything no matter what okay now going back to that idea of um, triangulating the model let's say if this was going into a game engine if I take this guy watch how clean this is if I go to mesh triangulate let's say if I needed to triangulate it for whatever I can say that if I select this guy and go to mesh triangulate Whoa, let me see. Let me just duplicate. And I'm going to, um, let me see. Okay. If I take this model here and go mesh, I'm sorry, yeah, mesh triangulate, you can see that, yes, he's triangulated, where I, I definitely would not want to continue modeling on this because it would be a nightmare. I couldn't put any edge loops or, or anything. But it's still going to work. It'll actually still deform properly, and it would be impossible for any of these to be non-planar. Where on this one, if I triangulate it, whoop, once again, I, I think I've got to unlock this guy. Hold on one second. Okay. So if I take this guy, and if I triangulate it, okay, now it's still 
old triangles like that one, but I can see that because this had a bad kind of underlying foundation, now you have problems building upon problems. Where this one here, even though this ended up all triangles and this one ended up all triangles, I can see that the triangles on this one are so much better evenly spaced, they make more sense, where the triangles on this one, once again, are not appropriate and just going to give you more modeling problems, more rigging problems, more UV mapping problems, and this one's going to be nice and clean. So sometimes you see models put into Sketchfab or put into a game engine, and they're triangulated. That doesn't mean that the person modeled it in triangles. A lot of times it'll automatically triangulate it when it puts it into a game engine or a real-time viewer, once again, to avoid the non-planar faces. However, the, the, if the person knows what they're doing, most likely they're modeling it in quads, and then either the software is automatically triangulating at the end or not. Where I feel like if you see stuff like this, then the person maybe wasn't mindful of triangles, and that, once again, that's going to give problems later on. So I think that this is, you know, hopefully kind of an in-depth answer to a question that I think a lot of beginners have and why I think it's kind of sometimes easier for an instructor to just say, hey, don't have any triangles or don't have any quads, or I'm sorry, n-gons, because you can see that it's kind of, um, it depends on the scenario and you can see the effects once you understand the process. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, make sure to leave any comments below. Subscribe for videos like this, new ones once a week, um, and just kind of let me know what you think. All right, hopefully this was helpful. Talk to you next time.